The start of a new tech bull market. That is how my next guest sees the current market set up with the tech sector up almost 2% so far this week. Joining me now to discuss, Eric Jackson, EMJ Capital founder and president. Welcome back. Good to see you. I mean, haven't we already been in a bull tech bull market? Doesn't feel that way. If you've been investing in any tech stocks outside well, of the, the Magnificent wrong tech. 7. <laughs> you've been in the wrong ones. The Mag 7 has been amazing this year, but uh, for everybody else, including non-tech, uh, 2023 has been, you know, a so-so year after a disastrous 2022. So are we talking about, like, higher growth, higher valuation tech? No question. No question. If you Bull market for those stocks? For everything across the board. Nothing can happen oh. without the Russell participating in this. Even though Russell is not necessarily tech, I don't think anything outside of the MAG-7 in tech can work unless the Russell works as well. And as you know, on Tuesday was a very significant day for the Russell. It finished almost up 6% on yeah, the day. Yeah, no, it was astonishing. It's a four standard deviation move. It's, it's, there was only one other time in the history of the Russell where it's had that kind of move. And I just don't think you can wave your hands and say that's just another day. I think it was a page turner. I think it's the start of a new rally for the market. I know, but aren't we like going back to like earlier chapters, so to speak, if you want to do the page turner thing, it's down 1.3% today. It's that had that incredible day, but that's kind of it. Well, last I checked, last five days, Russell's up something like 5%, Nasdaq's up four, you know, uh, S&P I think is up three for the last five days. Uh, ARC is up seven and a half percent in the last five days. So I well, think- Well, because yields have, yields have come down. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's hard sometimes, Scott, in the moment to recognize when something, you know, has significantly changed. I think there was a tremor on Tuesday, and things have changed. The Fed has done a Puxitani Powell, gone back into the hibernation for, I think, the next six years. I think that's how the market's taking it. Yields are, you know, day after day on the decline, on the retreat. And uh, it's time to recognize that that's going to lead to a brand new chapter in the market. Here. So yields have peaked. I think, yeah, it's a matter of waiting for the, for the cuts to come. When do you think those are coming? Whether in March, whether in July, I mean. Does it, it matter for your. It doesn't matter. Does it, it doesn't matter for your view. It doesn't matter. You don't need the Fed to cut for your new bull market for those kinds of stocks to work? No, because we didn't need the Fed to hike for a lot of SMID cap tech names to start to go in the tank in February 2021 is when it started. You know, there's something really interesting. If you look at a six-year chart of ARC, the growth tech, and you lay that on top of a six-year chart of NASDAQ during the dot-com era, it's kind of eerie the way that they, you know, mirror each other. Huge peaks and then huge declines. NASDAQ declined 77% from its peak in the dot-com era. ARC was down at its lowest, 80%. But what's really interesting to me is that it took two and a half years for NASDAQ to fully decline after the dot-com peak. Last month, we just passed the two and a half year anniversary of ARC's peak in February of 2021. Mm. So you think it's bottom. Um, NVIDIA, that's your top name? Top large cap name. For, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, all eyes are going to be on uh, next week. When yeah, they come what, what, do you, what do you think happens? I mean, you know, I don't know if you heard Joe Terranova up here earlier suggesting that the, you know, the next move of the market, so to speak, hangs on NVIDIA and those earnings next week. We've come a long way. There's really no other catalyst. The Fed speak is whatever. What do you think about that? I think it's important. It's a gorilla in the tech, in the MAG-7 for sure. Uh, does it hang on it? I mean, the market can continue to do well, just like we've sort of muddled through the tech earnings so far, you know, just because, uh, you know, one of the names has a, has a disappointing name. You know, suddenly it rebounds a few days later. But I think, I think NVIDIA will have a good report. I think it's only expensive if you think when they raised, cons you know, their guidance by $7 billion over consensus like they did in May, if you think that was a one-off, then it's expensive. If you think that was a sign of a secular shift and a lot of enterprises are getting into AI and building applications and models and that are going to use their chips and it's going to continue beyond just one quarter, then the, then the stock is cheap and it can't work. Hmm. What about Apple? Um, man, it's been a good comeback, right? And now it's pushing 190. Unbelievable comeback. And, and you, when you say, you know, is the market going to tank if, if, you know, NVIDIA has a bad earnings? I mean, Apple's a great example. Everybody, one day after Apple's earnings, thought the thing, you know, was ready to kind of be left for dead. And it's gone straight up pretty much ever since. So I think Apple is still cheap. It's one of the names that I also like in the MAG-7, along with Meta mm -hmm. and, uh, and Tesla, which I own all four. Um, I think Apple can still work. It's an iPhone story. It's a services 
story. People are still buying this thing, and they will, and they'll continue to spend money on the Apple platform. Right, good seeing you again. Thanks for being here. Derek Jackson joining us here at Post 9.